I just walked up to this spot. I had my tree stand on my back. I didn't even get my bow set on the ground. I was just getting ready to kneel down and I had the four bucks come by me right here. Just a couple of feet. All I could think was, man, let's get this tree stand off my back and get up this freaking tree. I've been hunting this five acre section of public land for the past two years. Learned quite a few lessons. Decided to come back out here scouting this year to prepare a little more for next year's archery season. Try to figure out where I went wrong, as well as try to prepare myself to not make the same mistakes as I made last year. So follow along, I've got some good stories to share. Sometimes it's hard to come back to this place. It's a piece of public land where I was seeing all the bucks early archery season this past year. I missed a bunch of opportunities. I spent most of my time hunting over there to the west about another 7,500 yards. And those bucks were coming from this direction, working their way over through here. Just about every evening I was seeing bucks and either couldn't get a shot or wasn't prepared to get a shot. I guarantee that's not gonna happen this year. Right here is pretty much the spot where it all began. Where I started realizing there was multiple bucks in here. I started running into a bunch of different rub lines, different heights. I'm on top of a bowl right now. This goes down into a little freshwater spring right here. And then there's three knuckles over there to the west and a bunch of bedding up here above me. When I came in here and started scouting last March, looking for sign, and I started finding all the rubs. It was also hammered with scrapes. And this is just one of the transition that has all these rub lines in it. Once we get over to the next finger, it's a whole nother set of rub lines. It gets pretty crazy over here. Early archery season, I was having bucks come by me, 30, 40 yards. Seemed like I was always set up 30 or 40 yards too far to the west. And I didn't want to start getting really aggressive and pushing in because I, I knew there were multiple bucks in here. The day I had that buck parade come through, I don't remember if it was the third week or the fourth week of early archery season. I wanted to push up a little bit further and get closer to bedding. And the day that I decided I was gonna push up, it was about two o'clock in the afternoon. So it's just over there to the east. There's the heavy rub lines over there from last year. And they come up through, they're bedding up here and coming right across here. And this is a heavy trail as well. Last year there wasn't a whole lot of acorns in here, but the year before it was hammered with acorns. And I think what's going to happen this year, we're going to have a lot of acorns dropping right here in this area this year. At least I'm hoping. And here's that other finger with these rub lines. I decided I was going to try to get up this tree. And the straps for my tree stand weren't long enough. And I'll tell you what, I was wishing I had sticks and I didn't. I thought this would have been a perfect spot to set up. Get up there about 20 feet. Be able to catch anything coming this way. Like I said, a lot of the bucks were coming across right here. I don't know if you get a heavy trail. You can see it's all kicked up over there in the bank. They were using this real heavy. Coming down through here. And working their way with to the east. I ended up not getting up in that tree. And the shame of it is, I couldn't really find another tree to get in, into this spot because of the wind. Up here, it's predominantly like a southwest wind. So I could have been in that tree. My scent would have went that direction. And anything coming out this way, or from above me, 
wouldn't have been able to wind me. So that was the plan. It's really why I, it's really why I picked that tree and couldn't really find another decent setup right here at this spot. My next plan of attack and the next tree I got in was right there. But again, those deer were traveling through here, coming down from there, and also down this ridge line there to my east. And right here's the tree I was getting ready to get up. I just walked up to this spot. I had my tree stand on my back. I didn't even get my bow set on the ground. I was just getting ready to kneel down, and I had the four bucks come by me right here. Just a couple of feet. All I could think was, man, let's get this tree stand off my back and get up this freaking tree. So I got my tree stand off my back, bow still laying on the ground, and I have my phone laid right here. I looked up, and there was another buck coming. Pretty nice buck coming right at me. He stopped about 20 yards, and I just froze. I either could have picked up my phone and got it on camera because I wasn't nearly set up or I could have picked up my bow but I, I'd have never got a shot off. He was there for about 30 seconds and he blew blew at me and ran that direction. And at that point I was thinking, man, this can't be happening. I put my back back against the tree, started getting all my gear ready to climb this tree. I was just getting the bottom of my tree stand on here. That buck blew off that direction and a bigger buck came from up top there, straight down. And he might have been 30 or 40 yards over there. And he's just standing there looking around, probably trying to figure out what was going on earlier when those four bucks ran by me here. And then that other buck at that point, you know, you got six, seven bucks running by or coming in before you're up in a tree or even prepared. It's just mind boggling. How are you supposed to handle a situation like that? You can see this fresh tracks. Leaves are all kicked up here. A bunch of rubs there. Bunch of rubs here, and another rub line. So depending on what kind of mood one of those bucks was in, you never know if they were gonna come down this trail or come over across that top trail. So I was trying to figure out the best spot to get in on these bucks. I knew which way the wind was blowing. I knew mostly how the deer were moving in here. Almost seemed like when I'd get set up, I'd come in from a different location. I couldn't win. There's a fresh scrape. That scrape's been here for a while and it's still using it. So with those trails being right there and the rub lines that I just showed you guys, come over here to the east, maybe 30 yards. And look at this tree set up. I actually spent quite a few days tucked into this tree. I was putting my tree stand right here. And I could just sit in my tree stand right here tucked into these three trees. If there was anything coming from the east, they couldn't see me. They obviously couldn't wind me because the wind was going that direction, the opposite direction. So, I don't remember exactly what day it was. It was still early archery season. my phone in my hand 
I usually have my phone mounted on my bow to use that camera if I needed to be quick about it. It's one of those mistakes I won't make again. I was sitting here one evening, it's probably 3.30 in the afternoon, it gets dark about 4.30. And I had a real nice eight pointer come down that trail we were just on. And all I needed him to do was take one more step, two more steps, right here in this opening. And I would have had a shot. He stopped right behind that tree right there. And I don't know if he heard my bow shaking or just felt something wasn't right, but he started walking straight at me. Got straight at me, and I could see his head bobbing between these two trees. That's not even 10 yards. I had my bow at full draw. I didn't have any of my cameras running. And uh, once he realized something wasn't right, he just turned around and trotted away. He actually didn't even blow. I sat here for a couple of minutes and I thought to myself, I was thinking, if I had just stood up, when he was behind that tree, I could have stepped off to the side and got a real quick shot. Those are things you don't think about till it's too late. I'll share another one with you. It was another day I was tucked into this tree, but I was standing like this. I was facing that way. No, actually, no, that's not how it happened. I was sitting here like this and I heard the squirrels going off behind me and I remember standing up real slow turn around looking and it was a I think it was a three-pointer should have been a six but it only had half of its rack come walking down that ridge line and at that point I was standing here like this and he was right over there. And he was looking right at me. I couldn't move. The whole time I was standing there, I was thinking, if I don't turn around and see where he went, I'm never going to know. So, I was facing that direction. I turned around real slow like this. See if I could locate him. And he was standing right there about 20 yards. And as soon as I turned around and I spotted him, he looked at me and he was gone. So yeah, this is my favorite spot on public land. One of my favorite spots. I've seen many bucks in this location. And they fooled me quite a few times. And I butchered quite a few opportunities. But I'll tell you what, I learned a lot this year on this specific location. And I'm really going to try to get in here and get it done this year. But we'll see. I have to wait and see what the sign looks like, you know, a month before archery. Come in here, make a couple mock scrapes. See what's going on. See if they're starting to rub. Perfect setup for being on the ground right there around those that triangular tree. It's back here I have a log that goes across this finger. So nothing was really coming this way. They would have either had to go around the top side or the bottom side here, and that's what they were doing. Yeah man. Got some really good stories from last year. And I missed a lot of it because I didn't have my cameras rolling. I think altogether it was 12 or 13 bucks I saw in this spot last year through the season. Every year's different. I put this scrape in here. It's actually a mock scrape. Can't forget to share this one with you guys. I had my 
camera set up right here about two months before archery season last year over there where I put that mock scrape in and it was crazy because within the first couple of days I had a nice 10 pointer come up through from the bottom side and I caught him at this scrape quite a few times but it was like 11 o'clock at night it's all evening like super late evening actually there was a nice 10 pointer eight six a couple other ones i can't remember i have to look at my footage but they were all coming in around 11 o'clock at night so as we got closer to archery season i come in and i check my sd cards there's no cell service out here so i couldn't use cell cameras uh, I noticed that the evening times, the later in the season we got, the earlier they were starting to come in. And in the morning, they were starting to come out a little bit later. But it wasn't until the second or third week of archery season that they were actually coming through here in daylight. By the time they were coming through here in daylight, they were coming in across the top side here about another 50 yards maybe and they weren't really leaving that finger they were staying up on that side and we're coming down to the bottom side here until after dark so it was a pretty neat thing to watch unfold as we went on through the season I'm really hoping to get in here and set up some mock scrapes Probably around August, probably around August I'll get in here and do that. Maybe set up a camera. We'll see, it's pretty exciting. So I just shared one of my prime public land hunting spots with you guys for early archery season. So let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment, hit the like button, hit that subscribe. Appreciate you guys. Up here in these mountains It's where I was meant to be Keeps me from my troubles Helps me to find my peace oh.